very excited to be getting into today's conversation. Honestly, there's a lot to discuss. I know some people as they hop in are going to miss this part, but there's a lot to discuss. So I'm going to do my best to leave time for Q&A at the end. I'll do my absolute best, but I'm really excited to have this conversation. I feel like this is the beginning of great things, just really talking through the ERG movement, what the ERG movement model is. I mean, I have in the, the title of this event that we're revolutionizing the way that we think about ERGs, which is a bold statement. And it is something that I wholeheartedly believe. And this is, this is the conversation that really kicks it off. Now, hopefully you all had some time over the past week since last week's episode to review the ERG movement model to see how it applies to your org. If not, no worries. Like I said, we'll be talking through it and hopefully you'll have time to ask some questions at the end. Quick intro though, for you all who don't know me, my name's Maceo. I go by she, her pronouns. And I also go by the ERG, the ERG homegirl on LinkedIn here. I am obsessed with ERGs and honestly, just after studying them and combining it with just all of my prior experience in other industries and really studying best business practices, it led me to launching the ERG movement, a new start, a refresh, an ERG 2.0, if you will. I guess we'll hop into today's episode. As also, I'll say this is actually officially our second episode of the podcast which is super exciting if you haven't watched the first you can check out our youtube channel just go to the erg movement on youtube you'll see the video not only do we post the podcast episodes there but we also post shorts and in the future we'll start bringing people on to speak about some wins that they had at their erg program so excited to see that come to life just wanted to plug that really quickly all right so for today we are talking about the ERG movement model. To get started with this, I just want to preface a few things to get us in the mindset to really take in this information. Thing one, the biggest thing I would say with the ERG movement model is you have to be willing to let go of old ERG ideals. That includes the concept of like the 4C model, that includes like this idea that affinity groups are community versions of ERGs and business groups are, business resource groups are, they bring higher business impact. That is no longer a thing with the ERG model. And honestly, with the future of ERGs, I'm sure that this is something that we'll also see is no longer a thing. So honestly, I, and I heard a quote recently that I just wanted to say, it said, you can't enter into the land of phenomenal until you leave the land of familiar. Truly, these have been around for over 50 years now. We are deep in the land of familiar, and I think it's time to move to the next level. It's time that we have revolutionary thinking with ERGs, and that's why we needed the ERG movement model. Okay, principles, principles. Before we go into the stages, what are the principles of the ERG movement model? Thing one, ERGs are the equivalent of a business enterprise and they must operate as such. That is rule number one. ERGs are the equivalent of a business enterprise. Now, when I say that, let's be very clear because I've heard a version of this statement, but the language change there makes a huge difference. When I say a business enterprise, I'm not saying a business unit. I'm not saying it should operate like the sales team operates. I'm not saying that ERGs within your company should operate like a specific team. They should operate like a functioning business enterprise. That's next level. We'll discuss what that means. But even when you think down to the roles of a thriving business, there's a CEO, there's a chief of operations. That's the type of structure that the ERG movement model advocates for and promotes that type of structure. We'll dive into it. Rule number two, all ERGs, regardless of what you call them, if you call them affinity groups, if you call them business impact groups, business resource groups, whatever you call them, they must have a community impact, meaning for the people who are part of that ERG, the members, the employees who are part of that underrepresented community, they must benefit from it. And the business must also have a benefit from it. It has to have that twofold impact regardless of what you call your ERG. The future of ERGs no longer allows space for 
one that just focuses on one because quite frankly to do business impact you need a community that's bought in and that's behind the idea and with community communities they typically want to drive that change they want to see that change for their community so it has to play that twofold purpose okay every erg that's rule number two regardless of what you call it has to play a twofold purpose and rule number three if your erg doesn't have the proper foundation it will fail it does not matter if it does not have that foundation that means think to how your erg program was started i know this is a sensitive conversation for some people but it has to be said because so many ERGs were started the same exact way. Companies allowing employees to be so grassroots about it that there's no structure. There's no clarity. There's no clear vision. There's no uniformity in terms of gathering people together towards a common cause. You know the difference between a movement and a mob? You know, I started that quote and I really had the second half in my brain and it literally just went out of my brain. But I, the difference between a movement and a mob is organization. That's what I was going to say. So really, it's almost like you're, you're not starting movements and communities who want to drive change in that sense. When you have an ERG program without the structure, that's what I'm going for. So if you don't have an ERG with an ERG program, with a proper foundation, it will fail. Now that doesn't mean that you're doomed to fail forever. Next week, in next week's episode, we'll be discussing how you'll be able to start over your ERG program. How I have personally done this at more than one company and implemented structure and systems and clear role processes in a way that is easily able to be duplicated. And I did it within one quarter at that. I know it's possible. Like I said, I've seen it happen more than once and I'm ready, not even ready. I think the ERG space is ready for this type of change. So I'm not, you know, that's next week's episode. You all now know the three principles of the ERG movement. Thing one, ERGs are equivalent to business enterprises. I'm specifically not saying small businesses here because when you think of a small business, you think of all the gaps that the business might not have. A lot of small businesses can be kind of inconsistent. Think of like your favorite mom and pop shop that might not, you know, that opens kind of when it wants to. We're not thinking small business. We're thinking professional business enterprise and how we can set up ERGs for success. Thing two or rule number two, ERGs must provide impact for the communities that it serves and for the business that it operates within. And rule number three, if your ERG does not have the proper foundation, it will fail. All right. I think we have the information that we need to get started talking about the ERG movement. I'm actually, I'm speaking really fast. So I think we'll actually have time for Q&A. But diving into these three phases of the ERG movement model might take a second. So we'll see. Like I just said, ERG movement model consists of three phases. Infancy adolescence and maturity. Think of a development model or growth model. Infancy through maturity is the idea here. No longer before people would have probably categorized an affinity group as an infant like stage ERG and they would have categorized a business resource group as a mature ERG. That's no longer a thing. Like I said, back when we set the tone, we have to get rid of old ideals here. So don't don't equate the two. If you have an ERG program, regardless of the name, just in our brain, let's let's refer to it as ERG for this conversation. Okay, let's talk about infancy, shall we? The infancy stage does not start when your program just launches. There is so much pre-work that needs to be done to set up an ERG program for success. So much work. And honestly, this is where most companies fail because they skip, they skip like 90% of the work and they just go ahead and launch the ERG or they go ahead and just tell employees, oh yeah, go ahead and launch it with the thought of, oh yeah, we'll just make it a really grassroots program. When in reality, it is an excuse to not do the pre-work. I'm saying it in like a pretty blunt way, but I think it's, I think we're able to have this conversation. I think the ERG space is ready for this conversation finally. So what happens, when does the infancy stage really starts? The infancy stage starts when the person 
who like is first interested in starting an ERG, when they have that thought in their mind, literally at the thought phase of saying, we should have an ERG program because what happens immediately after that will determine where the ERG program grow, goes long-term. Oftentimes, someone, how it's going modern day is someone will say, maybe someone from one of these unrepresented communities, for instance, will say, we should have an ERG program. And they go and ask their HR team, how do they get it started? Nine times out of 10, because they're asking, there isn't an ERG program already established. There's no structure or anything. So the, ER, so the HR team just says, well, just start one. Come, and in some cases, they might even throw in the whole charter thing. I'm not a fan of charters. There's an article in the ERG movement that explains why I don't like the charter thing. But oftentimes, that'll be the work, quote unquote, that will be required of the person who's interested in starting the ERG program. And then it's off to the races. That is literally how ERGs are started right now. And it terrifies me. Truly, I don't talk about it much, but I have a, a deep tie to the ERG community. Not only because it ex explains, not even explains, but I attribute a lot of where I am currently today to ERGs. But really, people like me who come from where I come from, they don't get opportunities like the opportunities that ERG programs allow them to have. So it really deeply upsets me. Not even upsets, disappoints, maybe upsets too. I have a lot of emotions around ERG programs not being set up for success from the start. Because rule number three said, if they don't have a good foundation, they will fail. And it's proven time and time again. So in the ERG movement model, within the infancy phase, the way that the ERG develops through infancy to adolescence is really in the pre-launch. Thing one, step one, will be really following the design thinking method. If you all are familiar with it, basically it's a user design process that's put in place in terms of how are you creating something that really benefits its users. When you think of an ERG program, you really want to focus on how it properly benefits the people who the program is for and also its stakeholders, which is in this case, its users too. Keep in mind, we want to make sure that the ERG program has impact on both the members and the business. So we want to create something from the jump that sets up impact for both of those populations. That being said, the first step in the design thinking process is to brainstorm in a sense, but really in this sense, it means that you're gonna do a listening tour. You're gonna gather quantitative and qualitative data in terms of what people want from an ERG program. Definitely some splits coming out soon in terms of how I host these listening tours, what questions need to be asked, but you need to ask, number one, obviously members of the community that you hope to serve. Also, when you think about some of the business units that you would imagine this ERG program working with, what they would like out of a partnership with a potential ERG program. Asking these questions will help you to then create your ERG program vision. This sounds like a lot and typically for someone who this isn't their full-time role. I acknowledge that. And honestly, that's why I do believe in companies having program managers. That's the, or someone who's really going to be the true ERG DRI, as we call them, directly responsible individual, because this is time consuming. But let's just say hypothetically that you're at a company now and you're looking to do this, truly getting the feedback of the people who would work with this program or who this program is for is the most important step because then just imagine if you're to create a whole program around an idea and you didn't get feedback from anyone else this might not be at all what what your stakeholders are looking to have or even the members for instance if i, I said you need to have impact on members and the business but let's just say hypothetically that the business really only wants like a 20% business impact. They're not, that's not a high priority for them. They really want to build these internal employee communities. If you start building this vision that's like high business impact and it's not what they want, down the line when you're looking to make this business impact happen, you're not going to have the buy-in from the stakeholders to actually execute on it. That's one of the many reasons why you have to get this in advance. So thing one is a listening tour. You'll take these learnings, and you'll turn this 
qualitative data into quantitative data. That's the importance of asking consistent questions in a listening tour because it'll make it that much easier for you to convert it into quantitative data. In addition, if you really have access and it's we don't always have access, let's be honest, to like the DNI data and things like that. You can use qualita quantitative data in that aspect to see what is the representation of employees from these underrepresented communities. You can really look at other, other metrics, even in terms of what are the engagement scores of employees from underrepresented communities and how does it compare to those who aren't from these communities? What are the performance scores? There are so many questions that linger that you know yearn to be answered maybe I should say and that it exists in the data and this will at least give you the ability to help outline the importance of having this ERG program to your stakeholders and when I say stakeholders like I'm saying I'm saying relevant business teams but also really when you go to sell this to executives they're going to be looking for some data something tangible especially if you're asking for budget and whatnot from your programs so just for context, listening tour, that helps to formulate the ERG program vision, a document that really outlines where your ERG is going to be when it is at full working capacity. Don't expect this to be within a year because that's not realistic. You all will see with this ERG movement model that it's going to take time and I'll explain a little bit why it takes time. But that being said, you'll create this vision now that you have an end destination in mind, which so many ERG programs are operating without, the leaders don't know what success is. They don't know why they're doing all this work. They don't know what the final product of an ERG program is. So honestly, that is actually one of the main contributors of burnout, but we're not gonna get into that right now. You have a vision. Now you can work backwards and create the strategy. How are we going to get from where we are currently, no program, to having this program that's operating at full capacity. That's where the strategy is. Also, a lot of ERG programs don't have a strategy. One of the main components of a strategy also includes a timeline that will help your ERG leaders really understand and kind of measure their own success of their ERGs within this ERG program approach. But if we're looking to get to a point where we need to do business impact, what are some milestones that our ERG needs to hit? to be able to, to unlock things like working with a new stakeholder team. Because when an ERG first launches, it's not really in a place where it's able to do that efficiently. We don't have the systems in place, so many things. So hopefully I'm not, hopefully I'm saying this kind of clear, but really all in this infancy stage, start with a listening tour, use the learnings from the qualitative and quantitative data to create a vision from the vision create a strategy, work backwards from the vision and really outline how you all will get there. Now you go and you sell the program to the executives. That's when you get their buy-in, that's when you get funding, et cetera. Good stuff. From there though, still not done. Infancy stage is still not over. And that's, you see, I'm listing a lot of things, a lot of steps that have been skipped. And this is honestly where so many people tune out, but, I'm really, I'm rambling about it so much because it's like, number one, every single time I talk to ERG program managers and leaders, it shows that this step has been missed. There's so much misalignment with the members and with the executives and with the business stakeholder teams. This has to be done. It's non-negotiable. Okay. So we'll just say after you sell the program, you'll then want to really create a strong structure for your ERG. What's going to be the leadership structure that exists within your ERG program? Keyword program, like I said in my post this morning, so many ERGs are left to operate within their own, I can't think of the word right now, but every ERG for themselves, basically. And that will never work. I mean, truly imagine that you're, like each ERG is a member on a sports team and you all go on a field and you, you don't even have a, a you, united perspective on where the goal is or like, what's the play? Like, can you imagine? It just doesn't make sense. And that's really the approach that ERG programs have been taking historically. And granted, it's gotten us to where we are now and a lot of great things have come out of ERG programs, but this is part of the level up of ERGs. So create these stru this structure, create clear processes for each of the roles that you say are gonna exist within the ERGs. 
It's not just saying, here's the new leadership structure. You all do with it what you may. It's now for each role. What does this role encompass? What are the action items or what are the duties that I will expect of them? And writing a step-by-step -step on how to execute. I know a lot of people, when I say that too, they're like, oh, do I really have to, I have to spell it out like that? Yeah, you do. And to be clear, I hear so many people say too, ERG leaders are volunteers on the other side. That That's the other thing. And yes, because they're volunteers, you want to make it as easy for them as possible to do the ERG leader work. And really this stuff, the granular stuff, the step-by-step -step on, okay, how do they put on an event? If they want to organize a community service thing locally, what are the steps that would be needed to be able to do it? That for an ERG leader, especially the new ones, because keep in mind your program is at an infancy stage. So once you do launch, you're going to have completely new, new ERG leaders in place. They are overwhelmed at thoughts like that. Yeah, some of them are able to do it and they will do it. But can you imagine how much easier it would be if it's like, here's how you do it. I just need you all to lean in on the creative part. I just need you all to lean in on what organizations do you want to work on, work with? All the things that are really niche to the community that you can't own. You're just giving them the framework, almost like a model home. They are the ones who decorate it and make it their own for their community. That completely changes the game for ERG leaders. ERG leaders won't be burnt out if, yeah, they think of an event, oh, these are, I have to do so much. When in reality, if there's a step-by-step -step for things that they need to do, it makes it that much easier for them to execute when the time comes. So we're just gonna leave it at that. I think you all get the picture. You create this structure and then you open up succession planning. That's when you get your new ERG leaders in place. We'll talk more in future episodes on best practices for succession planning. I do have a couple people lined up who did some really cool things that I'm excited to share with you all in future podcast episodes. But that's when you open up your succession planning. You get your new ERG leaders in place. Keeping in mind, I've said it already, but across all the ERGs, you have the same exact roles with the same exact titles. Okay? I, I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, so I think we're through infancy. So with adolescence, there are three phases, three phases to adolescence that like are within the adolescence phase, I should, guess I should say, early, mid, and, and late. In early adolescence, that's all about the launch of your program. Now you might say, oh, well, we have the leaders in place. Like, what do you mean launch? Your program is not launched just because you have ERG leaders. In many cases, the employees do know that there is a program coming and they know that being an ERG leader is a way to get further engaged if they do want to be part of that launch. But the launch hasn't happened yet. There is still a lot of work where now the ERG leaders, one, they learn their roles, they get comfortable in with the processes, with the the SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures, that's those step-by-step -step documents that outline their role. They start to get really comfortable with what will be expected of them. They ask you questions and this way you can go in and you can clarify those documents because it's a good chance that when you first created them, I mean, you're doing them from your own lens. So you're sometimes it's just really taking your best guess, but this is really where you give them an opportunity to provide feedback so you can clarify it. You have also, you have some sort of branding exercise. So the ERGs do have that look and feel that is specific to their ERG, but also is consistent across ERGs. Not to say that they all have to have the exact same logo, but you should be able to tell that they are from the same designer or even from the same company. Cause in many cases I've seen, that's not the case either. Why does this matter? Just briefly, I'll say when you think about the actual user experience, like the members themselves, when they look at this ERG program, it is so much easier to process getting involved in something that has a united front, that is cohesive. We'll get into it more. I'm not talking about that today, but really having a united look with the branding look and feel. In some cases, this also includes launching the ERGs or, you know, getting the ERGs websites ready to launch. So there's a lot of things that are, that are important in this launch phase. Mid adolescence is starts once the ERG program has launched. 
this is the time. So now the ERG leaders, they know their marching orders. Now it's just a matter of them executing upon it. This typically, I'm not going to give a definite time frame, but I'll say minimum a year. And I know that's like eek to some people hearing me say a year. But the reason is because during this phase, this mid-adolescence phase alone, there's going to be so many learnings. One, I didn't even mention the data piece. See, I completely skipped over that because you really want to start, you want to implement systems to track and measure ERG success before the launch of the ERG. This way, when you do launch and you're in this mid-adolescence phase, things are already being tracked. I'm really excited for next month when we'll do a workshop on how to create these ERG dashboards. I'm really, I nerd out about the data. But anyway, in this mid phase, the reason I bring that up is because that is gonna be the space for your learnings. You're gonna be able to tell so much from the data. What did people attend? What did they not attend? What time of day is the best time to, to throw an event or to host an initiative or even to post about people getting involved in the ERG initiative? What countries are most likely, if you all are a global company, what countries are most likely or least likely to get engaged? Why or why not? What departments are most likely or least likely to get engaged with the ERG program? Is there a gap with the current process where maybe you don't have a clear process in place for how hourly employees engage? And therefore, when you look at the support team's engagement, it's way lower than the other teams. There are so many questions that will be answered during that one year phase, but you'll need the data. The qualitative data is good too in terms of doing regular surveys to the members and even just going on listening tours maybe quarterly just to get a pulse check on how people really feel about the program. But in general, over the course of this year, there will be learnings. You'll plug in these holes with clearer processes. And even in some cases, you may even need to update your strategy. The timeline that you created may get lengthened a bit too by that. So that's really what this mid-adolescence phase is about. It's the learning phase. And yes, it takes time. Truly don't rush it. I say a year, but it's, it's not a hard year. I'll just say that. When I say, let me rephrase that. It's not dead set on a year. This could easily be three years for some companies. Now, I'm not saying that this should be a five year process. Really, I think the three years, if I had to put a hard deadline on it, I would say between one and three years because you don't want to exist in this phase forever. In this case, it's, it can very much be where you're putting too much structure into the point where it takes away the creativity piece. That's something that I've also seen companies go with. And then their ERG leaders, once again, experience that burnout because they feel like they're handcuffed. That's not what we're looking for. We're just looking to get the processes in a place where the ERGs are able to operate without the ERG program manager being hands-on. And important and, because it's not just about you as the ERG DRI being able to be hands off the program, but it's also the ERG leaders feeling that they're completely set up for success and that they don't need you to be hands on. That's an important part too. Okay, that's mid adolescence. Late adolescence is really where you iterate on these processes. This is where you can toy with scaling for ERGs. And this is also where, I mean, you can, you can begin to test some things within that mid-adolescence phase, but this is really where you start to test that business impact. Because up to this point, it's only been community. A lot of that testing and those processes have been heavily about how can we further engage this internal community and help them to feel more connected. Late adolescence is when you start to implement those business impact and like working with stakeholders and whatnot. An illustration that I gave some ERG leaders, and it's, I had it illustrated not the best in terms of visually, but that's why it's good that we're doing audio. I said that it's almost like having a party, right? And I don't know, now that I'm saying it out loud, I feel like, I feel like this actually goes better with next week's topic of relaunching the program. So I'm going to save it, but just know you would not want to invite stakeholders and I'm trying to think of a better word. I can't think like professionals to an event where the event isn't together first. I'm getting into the illustration. It's hard for me to really illustrate it without that. But like I said, it fits better for next week. So anyway, just know 
you don't want to start working with stakeholders until there's a strong community first. We'll just leave it at that. We'll touch on it later next week. But this is where you start to weave that in. You test maybe one per ERG, one like stakeholder partnership or business team partnership where they're trying to drive change for their community, whether that's internally or externally. I think internally is the lower hanging fruit. So definitely that's why I would recommend starting out with. And as you do that, you want to document and also once again, to start creating these processes in terms of how to best work with that team in the future. That is what the late adolescence phase is about. Now that you've done that, moving into maturity is when you really develop, further develop these business partnerships. That's when you already have a strong community. There's no inconsistency when it comes to the community aspect, when it comes to the regularity of initiatives, events, the variety of how you're engaging your members, the use of data and how you are telling a story and visualizing it. That is all old news. You've got that down. And the ERG leaders, they have their roles down. By now, you've probably went through a couple of rounds of succession planning. You also have that process completely down. It goes by smooth because you have everything documented and in processes. Now, this is where the big fish come in, where you're really working with multiple stakeholder teams simultaneously within the ERG program. As you do this, you're going to need to create more processes. And I know it's like, I keep saying these things, but I really, ERG programs, they do not have these processes in place and that is where things crumble. So getting into maturity and honestly, if I'm being completely honest, I personally don't know of one single ERG program that is in the maturity phase, not even one. And yeah. I don't know of one yet. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. And you might say, if, if you don't know of one, how are you gonna say that this is the next phase of the, of the ERG development model? Simple, because this is modeling a model that already exists. Is that the word modeling a model? This is replicating a model that already exists in terms of business development. This is stuff that I've been studying for the past two years while I've been wondering, why is everyone doing their own thing in the ERG space? And why is the ERG space still such a mess? So this is like connecting the dots here is really what I have like dedicated my life to for the past two years. So I say that to say, I know where we can be in the ERG space and I know where ERGs can be down the line if we follow this model. Can you imagine your ERG program having all the things that I mentioned already from the adolescence phase, but in addition to that, having clear processes to work with every single business unit team and to have those impacts for those underrepresented communities. That way it not only puts, it not only creates a better situation for those who are employed by the company, but also for the merchants that the company works with in case there is a B2B aspect or even the customers that the company works with. Customer, customer facing impact. Like if we really had this down in the ERG space, when it comes to like the, the like racist or sexist and all the other things, like commercials and things like that that come out, you can tell that there's no processes in place for them to work with that ERG because nine times out of 10, that would have never come to come to fruition. That's why we need these things in place. But to really have that type of partnership with all of the business units, you have to go through the adolescent space where you test it out with some, you see what works, what doesn't, et cetera. So that's really what the maturity phase is about. And honestly, when it comes to softwares, when it comes to automation for your ERG and just the things that are quote unquote hacks to make your ERG more efficient, I really and truly in the bottom of my heart believe that ERGs have to go through this phase. And when they're in the maturity phase is when they're ready for that. Because truly when you think about even bringing in a software to do something, if you are not clear on what, what the role should consist of, as it pertains to your company, because yes, we will provide role examples and structures that we've seen work. But with that though, if you haven't been able to tailor each of these processes to your company, how it's gonna be that much harder for you to even pick a, a software 
to work with or to bring on to your company or even an automation process to implement, you're going to have to keep redoing it because you don't even have the clarity of what you need first to be able to tell other people what you need. That's yeah. Anyway, so I truly believe that automation and things like that don't come until the maturity phase. I think nine times out of 10, it's like the easy way. What was I going to say? It's the easy way. It's like it's skipping steps, long story short. And it's another version of saying to ERG leaders, oh, just go do your ERG program. This one is now like, oh, yeah, we'll get something on here to, to manage the ERGs for you. When really, I mean, I think I already made the point clear. I like to ramble a lot, but that's my thoughts. Looky here, that actually went on for 40 minutes. I'm surprised. But there's a lot more clarity in this. I Right now, today, on the ERGmovement.com, you'll see our ERG movement model. You're able to walk through phase by phase and get a really clear understanding of what those phases consist of. When I tell you I've taken a lot of time, I've done a lot of research to get to that point. Not to say that there's not ways that it can evolve, but in general, the structure of it, it's there. I highly, highly recommend if you haven't already that you check that out, that you read it. Ask me questions about it, truly. I'm happy to walk you all through it. Cause like I said, not only is it just me just throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping it sticks, it's stuff that I have actually implemented and seen it work myself more than one time. And I want this for ERG programs globally, all around the world. Okay, so we're gonna get into questions. I did say q and I'm gonna give you all some time to raise your hands. In the meantime, I'll just plug, like I said, this is our episode two of the ERG Movement Podcast. So shout out to you all for being on here live. You can go on the ERGmovement.com to see our previous episode, episode one. You can also visit our YouTube channel. While I have 15 of you here, I will also plug the ERG Movement Slack because if you're not in it, you're missing out. Every single week, the ERG Movement posts ideas for each ERG community. That has happened at another another company or even just a really good idea on how to or of something to bring to light at your erg so you're already missing out on that not only that but we provide custom articles for specific ergs it's a great way to get your your questions answered as they come up you don't have to wait until tuesdays at 11 o'clock for our live podcast recording to ask a question if you're in the community it's the fastest growing erg community and i promise you it will be the dopest it's one that everyone will be part of very very soon okay cool i see some questions so i'm excited to get into it let's start with kristen hey kristen give me one second i'm gonna bring you to the stage hello hello how goes hey, it Casey. how are you i'm so good how are you i'm good i'm good mouth is dry i need a drink but yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you know i love everything that you just said to the 10th power and just really want to get your perspective around the process piece. So love process, love being able to automate things. I'm looking at some platforms right now. It is one of them, shameless plug. Um, tell me, I want to get your feedback on how have you been able to respond to ERG leaders who are resistant to that process implementation and getting that structure around the programming itself? Yeah. That is a great question because that's something I've definitely experienced. I will just say, funny story with one company. When I told them like, yeah, we're actually going to change the, the leadership structure. It's going to be the same across all, all the ERGs. When I tell you, completely went off on me. And I, I sat back and I took it. But in general, in terms of how it was handled, because truly right now, those same ERG leaders are completely bought into what I'm doing. There's a couple things. One is showing them the data. That made a huge difference because, for instance, one of the things that I was saying was we need to get rid of the, cha the chapters of this ERG. The chapters in the ERG are hurting the ERG. But saying that by itself, it to some ERG leaders, it could seem like an attack, like, oh, she just she just doesn't like us or this ERG or et cetera, when that's not the case at all. I knew for a fact that chapters can hurt an ERG if the ERG does not have that strong foundation first. So what I did was I just showed it to them with the data. I was able to show them how their engagement was, them with chapters versus an ERG that didn't have chapters. And I showed them the importance of that, that 
engagement, but even just seeing it in the numbers visualized, you can't argue with the data. So that's thing one. Thing two, I think as more people start to adopt these processes and structures, it'll be easier to, to tap other people. And that's one of the great part, parts about the ERG movement. I mean, this is a giving community. So there's other people that you'll be able to bring to your company as that social proof to say, look, our ERGs are thriving and it's because we have these processes. So that's thing two. And a third selling point that was really big for a lot of the processes and structure was really I don't know, this is kind of twofold. Number one, with that conversation after after they went off on me, first thing I did was I just kind of level set with them because I understood why they were so frustrated. Just like having that empathetic lens, I get that if you started this ERG, like with your bare hands, you built it from the ground up, you have a deep passion for it. And not just that, but also for the community that you serve and really, having that heart to heart moment where you're saying, I want the same things that you want. And I'm telling you that this is the only way to scale the ERG, to have those real impacts. You, We have to have some organization behind it. With that too, painting out the benefits for them individually, like having those processes makes it that much easier for you to then have the data which makes it that much easier for them to report it on their performance reviews. It makes it that much easier for them to use it for their benefit in the future. So those are some things that help. Also just having a really clear vision of what is the final vision. I guess I just said that. What's the final vision for the ERG program? Where are we hoping to go? And giving them that strategy and even giving them the opportunity to get to take, to leave comments on it. And this way you can actually have conversations with them and talk through their concerns. Those are also things that helped. Last thing, I know I have like 50,000. Having a listening tour, that's why I mentioned that too, which it can be time consuming, but really sitting down and talking to every single ERG leader and learning what is it that you imagine a thriving ERG would look like and factoring those in into the strategy where it fits. This way they feel like they truly had a part in crafting that, that vision or that, yeah, the program strategy and vision. Hopefully that helped. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, yes. And thank you for asking a question. And anyone, we have 14 more minutes. So if you have a question, I'm here. Christopher, welcome to the stage. <laughs> Hello, Maceo. Appreciate you, appreciate you hosting this and just building a platform of sharing information. Yeah. Um, someone that's, you know, on the entry level of my DEI career. I used to be a chef for 16 years and I went back to school and I've just seen a lot. And that's kind of why I got into DEI in the first place was just to bring that perspective more just from the operational background, from the operational perspective. But I guess the question that I have is I've been, you know, I've been a member of DEI councils that were not particularly effective. We didn't have any, you know, real stakeholders that could make any of our recommendations actionable. And and even most recently, <clears throat> I've seen within the ERGs where they were given autonomy, but weren't giving enough structure. So they were formed at the same time, but were at different levels of progress after like three months or so. You know, one had you know, a president, a treasurer, they had a newsletter going on, they were having more regular meetings, while another one was having a lot of turnover in leadership. And as I know, you know, autonomy is a very integral part of an ERG, but also having, as you said earlier, like having a model that you're basing the success of the ERG off of is like incredibly important. So I was, I guess the question that I have is when you're going to a, an organization that already has an ERG structure, but perhaps it's not working or it's not modeled on anything where it has a, you know, kind of a logical progression of, of effectiveness. Mm -hmm. I guess, how do you go into these ERGs and show them a different way in which you value what they've done, but you're bringing a new perspective that can help them achieve better results? Yeah, that's a great question. Going back to the data piece, that is the, really one of the best ways to get ERG leader buy-in. And not just having the data, but visualizing it, making it really clear for people to see, oh, these are the wins that we've had. And that's where you can really give them their props. 
and say, I, I noticed that these things are working with the ERG. And that's where you can also, when you have these, these listening tours, because every single time I'm going to say, you have to speak to the people who are within the ERG program, every single one of them, honestly, because I've done listening tours. And honestly, there might be that last person I spoke to that 35th person. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. And yes, just know I'm not exaggerating when I say 35, if there are 35 ERG leaders, but truly speaking to them, that last person might provide the value that you needed and that puzzle piece to be like, oh, I see now what was missing in this current one. And then also, like I said, when you have these listening tours, that's how you get their buy-in because now you're saying, okay, I'm asking you these questions because we're going to improve the ERG program. We want to make it so that your ERGs are able to do more and better and scale and have organization and you're going to be able to to articulate in your performance review and we're going to be able to get more budget down the line and painting that picture of what's possible painting the picture of where they currently at, are at and also then that's where that strategy comes in that they are able to say that they contributed to and which it paints the picture of how you go from where you're currently at to where they want to be where you want to be too but where they want to be that's how you get that full buy-in to get ERG leaders just as excited as you are. But there has to be execution on the, your promises. I think that that's one thing that also gets missed a lot is there are a lot of times within these listening tours where you might say things like, oh yeah, you'll be able to, to put it on your performance review. But then come performance review time, you don't offer any resources to help the ERG leaders articulate their value or you don't, you still don't have the data in place that you're visualizing. In many cases, that's going to frustrate ERG leaders and you're going to be back to square one. So once you have that buy-in, that's valuable. You got to keep it by delivering also to on the promises that you made. Hopefully that helped. Yeah, it did a lot. And just thank you for really just advocating for a data-driven and empathetic approach to ERG management. I think sometimes we think it's one or the other, but the integration of both is really the key. So thank you. Thank you for your insights. Yeah, I agree completely. Truly the, the both, the and not either or as they said once upon a time at an organization I was at, so that shall not be named. But anyway, yeah, thank you for your question. Did you have another question too, Kristen? I did, girl. I'm just full of questions this morning. You're all good. I don't see anyone else raising their hand, so <laughs> let's go. Well, I, I love the fact that we're talking about changing the model, and sometimes the model when you get to a certain organization is not currently in place, but you recognize the need for some type of change to create impact that you can link to business outcomes and success and just development in general. So as you start to implement this new leadership structure, how do you handle leadership vacancies like with elections or manager and self-nomination? Because I imagine that maybe not having someone in leadership roles could present a bit more of a challenge as it relates to bandwidth for ERG leaders, unless someone on the DEI team is stepping in to fill in those gaps until those roles are filled. So just curious, how do you handle vacancies when you change leadership structure? Yes, that is a great question. And that, I love that question because it really allows me to be able to talk about like the deeper parts than just saying service level business impact. Because this is where thing one, I say the marketing of the ERG is so, so big. Once again, just like a business has to market itself same way as what the ERG leaders have, what, what the ERGs have to do in general or the ERG program, I should say rather. Because in general, I don't think that they're, they're not even, I don't think in my experience, I've never had vacancies after going through succession planning because there is actually so many people who express interest. I've seen also too, a couple of people, like they'll just ask me like, yeah, we, we just put out a form and we asked people to join for ERG leadership and no one showed up, but that's truly where the marketing piece comes in. How are we talking about the ERG and what ERG leadership is? Are we focusing on, oh, these are the duties that are part of it? Or are we highlighting these are the benefits that you get as an ERG leader, which is not compensation. I almost say never talk about the compensation if that even exists. But 
you'll get professional development or you'll get the chance to network with executive with executives. Another big one, what was I saying? I just said, sometimes thoughts just go out of my brain. The third benefit that I was going to say, oh, really focusing on for those specific roles, what type of skill set would that help someone improve? So for instance, for communications, one thing I like to say is, if you are interested in marketing or if you're interested in internal comms, this is the role for you. That really gets people more engaged in it. And they're like, wow, I am interested. I had someone recently join an ERG leadership team for that exact reason. And nine months later, she got a job making like double what she was currently making in internal communications from a support role because she was interested in internal communications and she was able to use the data that she got from being an ERG leader in that role to get to that next level in her career. So that's the first part. That's like the before piece in terms of it, how to get the ERG leaders in place. In terms of if there are vacancies, let's just say people leave the company, et cetera, even with these first rounds of succession planning, it may not be perfect. And that's the part of like really that mid adolescence where you're testing things out anyway. And sometimes people might say like this role is not not what I thought it was, which is a sign to whoever created the process is like, wow, I, I, maybe I just needed to tighten up the, the processes and things like that. But in the meantime, what's really good is because you have processes, it's now even for you in terms of the execution, if or whoever has to step in to support the ERG, it's that much easier for them to do because once again, the think work is out of it. The, okay, you know, or even let's just say the ERG does open it up to volunteers, which I have thoughts on, but even if they did say like, oh, you know, if, it, if someone wants to help out for the month, you know, you can join and see what it's like to be an ERG leader. This way, it's not like a long-term commitment, but the process will be documented for that person. So it'll be that much easier for them to execute on it. Really, with a lot of the ERG leader roles, they're not, there's not that much into it. It's just because it's not outlined very clearly what it encompasses that it feels overwhelming. But if people know, okay, we don't have a communications person in place right now and we have to talk to our members and actively engage them. So what do I do? Okay, well, here's the template to the content calendar. It's already provided me with some thought starters on how to do it. It only takes about an hour to do, which honestly, that's the thing is when you have these things documented, it's so much easier to be able to execute on it. It does not take that much time, especially if you have dedicated deep work time versus like distracted time, which a lot of ERG leaders have where they're doing like 10 things at once and answering Slack messages, but you'll really be able to do so much more in such a concise period of time. If it's outlined what it is, you just check it off as you go. Hopefully that made sense too. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And just in time, we have one more just in time. Ha ha ha. Welcome to the stage. Justin, I think it's, I said a lot to speak. Okay, there we go. To wrap us up for today, I don't know. Can you hear me, Justin? Or maybe you're not unmuted. Okay, okay there we go. Cool. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, all good. Okay, all right. Good Good morning, everyone. Maceo and team, thank you all so much for the work that you're doing, all the great questions. One of the things that I, I wanted to kind of Pick your brain. You talked about like the listening session with your ERGs as you're kind of outlining the and really understanding what what they need, I think is the is kind of like the ultimate outcome. You know, if you had to kind of like pinpoint three questions that you're asking in those sessions, what would those be? Yes, that is a great question. Off the top of my head, I think that there's typically five. Man, like I'm far away. I got time for five. You got, <laughs> well, I say that to say, I'm like, the way my recording situation is set up, I would literally just pull it up right now. But off the top of my head, I can say, easy one is, what are your favorite things about the ERG program? Sometimes I give a list, like two to three items. That's an easy way to like have that quantitative, to turn it into quantitative. Because if people are like, 
okay, out of the professional development, out of the networking and out of the executive sponsorship, I really love the executive piece. And like people just kind of button select which one is their favorite and why. That's a really easy way to do it. As people explain the why, definitely take notes of that too, because that'll, that can be used quantitatively within your document that outlines your vision. Hearing from people like, oh, that's why this is important. It's not just executive sponsorship, because then you might assume that you know the importance, but really you might say like, okay, executive sponsorship is important. Obviously they just want the mentorship when really they just want to better understand that business unit. Who knows what the intention might be, but asking that question too. Okay, next one would be selfishly. I always ask, I say selfishly, what do you want out of being an ERG leader? That's a big one because ERG leaders are always talking about the community, very selfless, passionate people 90% of the time. So really focusing in on the selfishly piece, that's giving them, that's giving you clarity in terms of what ERG benefits, ERG leadership benefits and recognition might look like, and also what needs to be a high priority when it comes to onboarding these ERG leaders. If overwhelming majority really focus on, well, you know, I really just want like executive mentorship. That's what I would get out of it personally and selfishly. That is something that you really want to prioritize implementing at your company. So that's question number two. Number three, I would say as it pertains to your stakeholders and to executives is dream state. What does it look like to work with an ERG program for positive change with your team and just hearing from them specifically, like what it means to work to, what am I trying to say? What impact they imagine coming from their team working with ERGs. And that'll also kind of help you determine where that team is at in terms of partnering with them way down the line because it really if the vision is not clear in terms of how they want to work with you maybe they just need to see some social proof first of your erg program up and running and then they can start to have more clear ideas versus like if the hr team is very clear oh yeah we want we definitely can imagine doing an inclusive hiring audit or something like that that means that that is one of those low-hanging fruits that you can first dive after Last one that comes to my head and then it leaves, it, it comes to my brain and then it leaves my brain is, oh, when you have this data, cause you have some data, even when you go to do the listening tours or you can asking people their opinions on why the numbers are what they are can be very powerful. Even in terms of like, let's say like you do have access to performance review scores as it pertains to the different communities or even departments or even tenure of your of the employees as it relates to departments there's questions that other people are interested in and they really want to be able to deep dive that you can tie back to engagement in the community but really asking them why do you think these numbers are the way are what why do you think that they are the way that they are will go far in you helping you to create your strategy for instance one company that i worked with like the engagement from the Mexico team was super low. And this, let's just say like, re, if I'm saying from the example that you're restarting an ERG program, not necessarily that you're launching in this instance, but from an ERG program that already existed, the engagement from, Mex from the Mexico team was super low. I was then able to ask the HR leader of that region, what is your feedback or thoughts on why this may be and how we can really help to drive this in the future? And they were able to say that, oh, well, that team, they really respond well to, to tangible gifts. So like the next event that we did, we were able to offer some ERG swag, which is, I have thoughts on ERG swag, but just in general, that was the case. Two people who attended the event for the first time and engagement quickly went from like a 9% to like 75. It was such an in incredible jump but truly using these listening sessions to get the behind the scenes in terms of how you're going to set up your ERG program for success is helpful too. So those are just a couple, but that's a good point. I think that I will add that to my content list in terms of blog posts and things like that to add to the site. So appreciate you. Always appreciate you and the work that you're doing. Yes, and I appreciate you all for hopping on. Like I said, this is episode two. And if you're not in the Slack community, what are you doing? Come on, you gotta join us in the Slack. We have so many great things coming. And I look forward to this being on YouTube 
it'll be a lot quicker than episode one. I promise that it'll be on YouTube, but there's more exciting things to come. I will see you all next week at 11 a.m. where we'll be discussing how to relaunch your ERG program, a proven method that I've done more than once in one quarter to completely relaunch an ERG program and set it for success, set it up for success. So I will see you all next week and we'll discuss then. Have a good one, everyone.